Hi, good day to everyone. Today I'm going to discuss to you the biomedical importance and therapeutic roles of activated charcoal. First, I would like to introduce myself. I am a professor of biochemistry and uh, molecular biology as well as medical physiology at the Matthias H. Asnar Memorial College of Medicine here at Southwestern University in Cebu City. This is the oldest uh, medical school in the Central and Southern Philippines and we have operated this college for the past 66 years already. So now I am here as a professor of biochemistry and I'm going to discuss to you the biomedical importance and therapeutic roles of activated charcoal. First, we'd like to emphasize to the audience or the uh, hearing public that uh, activated charcoal is categorized under a uh, prophylactic or something like a cleansing agent that would remove toxins from the system. However, to some extent, because it is a biological material, there are some uh, nutritive value. In my research, uh, I was able to uh, expound that uh, this charcoal obtained from plant materials, especially the shells as well as cellulosic materials from plants, are basically polymers of carbohydrates and polysaccharides. In its uh, nutrient content, uh, we can account for about uh, several components. Uh, charcoal, in its uh, origin, contains uh, many pentoses. And uh, pentoses, by definition, in biochemistry, it is a kind of uh, five-carbon uh, sugar. And it has also some lignins. It's a kind of a polysaccharide. So this is about uh, the pentose is about 27% more or less. And there's about 29%. And uh, cellulose is also found in cellulose is also a polymer, it's a carbohydrate. Same is true with the cellulose. And then we have the uronic acids. It has 26.66%. Uh, we have the uronic acid about 3.5%. And uh, of course the ash is about 0.6%. So if you try to take note, uh, charcoal, although it is, uh, it is charred, however, uh, it has some values because it contains, uh, it contains uh, pentoses, which is a 5 carbon sugar, it's a source of energy. Lignin is a carbohydrate, but these ones are, uh, the lignins and cellulose serves as adsorbents. That's why it's a very perfect, uh, perfect material for uh, detoxification in the human system. The uronic acids are also needed in metabolism. So this, uh, these are derived from sugars. And of course the ash, and it has all the, not of nutritive value, but of, uh, what you call this, a cleansing value. So basically, if you're going to look at uh, activated charcoal, it is also, uh, it also contains some nutritive uh, um, values, no? or value. Now, for now, we are going to discuss what is really an activated carbon. So, an activated carbon looks like this uh, when it is processed, or it is a, basically a burn uh, biological materials and uh, the perfect of, uh, source of this are plant materials.
So when you say activated carbon, it is uh, also called the activated charcoal or activated coal or uh, uh, we call it the carboactivatus. It's a form of carbon processed with, with uh, several low or low volume pores that increases the surface area available for adsorption or chemical reactions. So basically it is a matrix that is provided in order to increase the surface area. You process it in different uh, sizes so that the smaller the better because the smaller the particles, the greater is the surface area. Therefore, the capacity to absorb, absorb rather, is a lot better compared to rough materials. So, before I could proceed, I would like to emphasize regarding carbon. All materials, whether it's plant or animal, when charred or burned, it is zeroed in into an elemental form called carbon. And carbon, in the chemical point of view, it is an element with atomic number of 6. And this atomic number represents an atomic or electronic configuration that is responsible for the characteristic of this material. Now, since plant materials or animal materials, when charred, becomes carbon, so let us try to look at the chemical properties of this carbon. If you are going to arrange the electronic configurations of carbon having six electrons, then it would appear this way. So if this is the nucleus of the carbon, and the, the electrons are arranged around the nucleus, the first shell uh, only accommodates two electrons, and that's already a pair of electrons. The succeeding shells or the energy levels can occupy at most eight electrons. So since there are only six electrons in carbon, we could arrange it in this manner. One, two in the first shell, and in the second shell or the second energy level, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So all in all, there are six electrons because the atomic number of uh, carbon is six. So, with this uh, arrangement and the atomic level, carbon has a ligand, or you call it the valence, the other term for ligand is the valence, or its binding capacity. So, in other words, carbon can bind at least four ligands because there is a vacant slot here. Now, why do you say so? Because electrons in nature should occur in pairs, but in this case, since they are not paired, so therefore there is vacancy in that slot. There's another vacancy in this slot, another vacancy in this slot, and then that slot. So in other words, carbon can accommodate a maximum of four ligands for having the property of adsorbance. So that's why carbon has a very good adsorbance capacity. It's different from the word absorb because it is inside, but in this case, it's on the surface of the atom where molecules are attracted, or substances are attracted to. Now, carbon compared to silicon, silicon as an element has atomic number of 14. So if you're going to arrange, so this is the, if this is the nucleus of silicon, uh, we can draw a electron configuration. So the first shell always occupies two. So the second shell has a maximum of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, ten. Then the outer shell, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, if you're going to notice silicon in its electronic configuration and that of carbon, in its outer shell, they are the same, having a vacant slot of 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that's why if you compare silicon 
with carbon, they have the same property in terms of adsorbance. Meaning that silicon is also efficient in getting toxins from the system. But why is it that we cannot use silicon internally in removing toxins? You cannot just swallow uh, silicon or in the, the Tagalog word, uh, silicon is actually buhangin. So you cannot eat buhangin and you might complicate the system because silicon, although absorbent, absorbent, but it is heavy and it will complicate the gastrointestinal tract. So, if you're going to make use of silicon as a uh, absorbing material for removing toxins, this is only good if it is applied outside the body. But you can never use this inside the body, uh, much more in the gastrointestinal tract because this might uh, uh, interfere with the uh, absorbance of uh, the nutrients in the small intestine. But carbon, you can actually tolerate the presence of carbon in the gastrointestinal tract because it is light, it is head, it is light, and therefore uh, it is it does not uh, settle, and uh, they can always be uh, they can form a what you call emulsifying properties of the food that we eat. Um, so we don't advise the use of silicon for removing toxins in the human body. We only uh, advise or recommend carbon or as a source or, or rather as an instrument or material for ab absorbing uh, toxins in the, human, in the human system. So basically, um, I even ad advise some uh, patients that if they have some opportunities to go to the beach, you can, uh, if especially if the buhangin is clean or the sand is clean, you can dug a hole and then you bury yourself there with the sand. That is also a poultice. So that is also helpful uh, practice. So it makes a practical applications of this uh, silicon as a material for removing toxins. But you probably uh, buried yourself in the sun for about 30 minutes to one hour, you have sufficient detoxification in that sense. But uh, if you don't have the opportunity to have that, you can use carbon instead as your poultice. You can make a paste of carbon, debated carbon, and you can place it inside your, or in, in the whole face of your skin, or all over the body to remove some form of toxins. So that's why this carbon evolved into a useful medical uh, uh, interventions for removing uh, toxins from the outside. That's why it's called, uh, the term here is poultice. No? So the term for that is poultice. So let's proceed with the discussion of activated carbon. So basically, when you say carbon, it is a charred material of living material because the living materials are composed of carbons. Carbon skeletons marks the uh, foundation of every uh, organic substance. So if you are going to burn uh, the organic substance, then it makes a carbon residue, which is now used as our uh, interventions for the purpose of removing toxins. But in order to, to be uh, guided on what type of carbon to be used properly in this uh, intervention, we recommend only carbon from plant materials, especially those uh, uh, medicinal plants would be a very good source of carbon. But carbon, if it is not activated, has some form of uh, less efficiency, or in other words, the efficiency of that carbon in terms of binding to, to uh, some materials is less because if they are not activated, then perhaps some contaminants are also bound to this uh, surface. 
So in order to make it very efficient, it has to pass through what you call activation process. So what is activation of carbon? According to, according to the definition of activation, it is actually uh, the carbonization of the material using a range of temperature between 600 degrees to 900 degrees Celsius. Uh, the presence of this, uh, the, rather the sub, sub, subjecting it to this temperature would remove the contaminants of the carbon. So that if these contaminants of the carbon are removed, even gaseous materials or even what other materials, solid or liquid materials, are removed when the carbon, the carbonized material, is subjected to this temperature. So only materials are sub that are subjected to this temperature will result to what you call activated carbon. And what is the advantage of this activated carbon? As I said, the efficiency of adsorbance is greater because once you activate it, that means there are no more contaminants. That means <coughs> the carbon is already 100% uh, uh, efficient in terms of binding to the substances you want to remove. So that's on the physical activation. There is also what you call chemical activation. Chemical activation uses a lower temperature, about 450 to 900. So the physical activation is a lot better than chemical activation. So the source of carbon that we have mentioned earlier could be any material, could be a plant, could be an animal, could be uh, inorganic coal or whatever. But for our purpose of medical uh, intervention, we recommend the uh, carbon that is derived from plant materials, of which our activated car charcoal that we have in this company uh, through the Actilite Health Products, we produce the activated carbon coming from plant materials. So that makes our product uh, very safe. It is very uh, excellent as well as it's very efficient in removing toxins. So what is our... Uh, uh, before I proceed to other aspects, well, uh, let me just give you some uh, classifications of uh, carbon or activated carbons. One is that there is what you call a powdered activated carbon. Uh, these are actually traditionally active carbons that are made into particulate forms, as small as uh, the size of about one millimeter, with an average diameter between about 0.15 as well as 0.25 millimeters. Now with this, if you are going to make a smaller uh, size, then it has a large surface area. So this is what I have uh, mentioned earlier, that the, the smaller the particles and the more activated it is, the better it is there uh, for efficiency of uh, removing toxins as well as increasing the large uh, surface area or increasing the surface area of a particular particulate matter. So mesh size matters. Then there is also what you call the granular activated carbon or the GAC. This granular activated carbon has relatively larger particle size compared to powdered activated carbon. Therefore, presents a smaller surface area. So between the, the other carbon, this is a lot, uh, or rather is less efficient in terms of their adsorbent capacity. Then there is also the extruded activated carbon. Uh, this type of carbon combines a powdered activated carbon with a binder, which are fused together and extruded into cylindrical shapes that will about measured about 0.8 to about 130 millimeters. These are mainly used for gas-based applications 
in the industrial applications. So we don't use this type of uh, extruded activated carbon for medical purposes. There is also the bead activated carbon. This is made from petroleum. This is not a good type. So I'm just reviewing to you some of these important carbons. Uh, the impregnated carbon are porous carbon containing several types of inorganic impregnated materials such as iodine. This, they use this for industrial purposes also. So in cleaning uh, the water, for example, they use this uh, because they are inorganic impregnations in the carbon such as iodine, silver, aluminum, manganese, zinc, iron, lithium, and calcium. Uh, are incorporated. So drinking water can be obtained from natural water by